Hi, this is guitarist Dennis Tape, and I'm in my home studio, and I want to welcome you um, to this video, and lately what I've been doing, among other things of course, um, including fixing an input jack on a guitar, and of course I misplaced the soldering iron so I had to get a soldering iron and some solder and that worked great but really um, one of the things that I've been doing you know when I'm not recording and that kind of thing and, or you know playing is um, testing out gear okay in particular on um, amps um, and that kind of thing and I thought I'd share some of that with you before I tore it all down, um, actually I counted the amps just in my living room, it's like 18 amps, right, which is downright ridiculous. So before I tear that down, I, I wanted to do this video and I tried to answer the age-old question, right, do I need a 1x12 speaker cabinet or a 2x12? speaker cabinet. And how does that compare to little tiny amps, you know, with like 8-inch speakers and that kind of thing. Okay, and um, well, as you'll see, I was actually quite surprised, you know. Um, and what I assumed sound-wise turns out um, wasn't quite right and let me explain um, so what I have out there and, and I'll bring the camera out there right because I can't really hold them in here um, there's just not the space isn't there and it's pretty darn crowded right now so um, but I thought I'd share this video you know and that's, you know, uh, part of being a guitarist is um, finding what works for you, what sounds good, you know, and a cabinet, um, you know, may sound really good for someone and for someone else may not be the right one, you know, or at least have a different sound, right, and that's the other thing. Uh, so what I have out there is I have a little orange, mini orange, I call them, a 20 LDX. It's a 20 watt solid state, little tiny amp with an 8 inch speaker. And I have two of those set up, okay? And so I created a, a loop and then from there, have been, um, then I have a X2, Super Champ X2 um, tube head, it's a little 15 watt tube head, and then three different cabinets, and one is a Fender SC112, okay, and that's a 12 inch 1 by 12 speaker, it's a, rated at 80 watts, it's an 8 ohm speaker, going into this little X2 head and it was actually you know made for it you know we'll see how that goes and um, before I mention the other cabinets I'll tell you this much um, new price on that is $199 um, and I've seen them used for about 150 but by the time you add shipping and tax you might as well buy it new and, and that's another thing be very careful when you buy a used speaker cabinet um, the reason is um, many times those speakers on 
they're, they're not um, blown. Okay, but you know the the magnet has moved a little, and they they'll kind of flub out and those kinds of things at higher volumes or you know the big low end that kind of thing. Um, but anyway, this little Fender cabinet, one by twelve cabinet. It's not very big at all, you know. And in fact, it sat in my studio room for quite a while and kind of dismissed it, you know. Because it, well, this, you know, didn't look that impressive. So it's like, nah, you know. And in fact, when you go to, you know, online mail order places or what have you, um, there are a lot of 1x12 cabinets, you know, and they have different speakers in them from different manufacturers. And the price range, I was quite surprised. 199 is one of the lowest priced 1x12 cabinets, you know. Uh, other manufacturers are PV has one. I think it's 199 as well. Um, and then a couple of others. Um, and then uh, there was an orange cabinet, which had, gets great reviews, but it's twice as expensive, almost three seventy nine, right? And it goes up from there. And we're talking five, six hundred dollars, you know, even higher, you know. And we're talking a Friedman, you know. And I'm sorry, I, you know. I just don't see a 1x12 costing that much, you know. I think a lot of it has to do with the name. And, and I'm sure they're great cabinets, you know. And I'm not just pointing that one out. There are others, you know. I guess it depends on the speaker inside, of course, and the construction and so on. So, when I saw that, and I saw that the you know, the, the prices of the 1x12s and this little Fender 1x12, you know, is 199 new and, and it's one of the, you know, in it, most inexpensive 1x12 cabinets from a manufacturer, you know, of, I didn't have much hopes for it, you know, really. Um, however, uh, I've been testing it, right, hooked up to the X2, um, head, and I guess they're matching, you know, but it really, it fits a lot of little mini heads, you know, and the X2 head is pretty small, you know, and in fact, it's only got three tubes in it. And a little 15 watt tube amp. They can get quite loud. Okay, in any case, so pretty darn inexpensive um, in comparison to other manufacturers. You know, and I don't know how much of that is the name. You know, that you're paying for the name. You know, but the prices really get outrageous, I think. And, and there are many, uh, you know, uh, uh, not homemade speakers necessarily, but where you can buy a cabinet and put a speaker in it, you know. And, um, and those, that can get pretty pricey too, you know. I mean, I've seen where just the cabinet alone, you know, is, a, you know, $100. That's without a speaker, you know. And by the time you add a speaker, well, you're at the $200 mark. Now, this little Fender cabinet has a Celestian I think G1280 or something like that. Um, I don't remember exactly. Anyway. Um, so, I mean, it should be fairly decent. You know, I don't know. Well, actually, I do know because I tested them. Um, and quite frankly, I was 
blown away, to tell you the truth. Um, man. And we'll get to that. We'll get to the results here pretty soon. Okay. So that's the 1 by 12. You know, and I have friends and they swear by 2 by 12 cabinets, right? And so I had a, uh, it's actually a, a Behringer Bouguera type, it has Bouguera speakers in it, I think. And they're rated at 100 watts, two of them. You know, it's an 8 ohm cabinet. You know, so they're probably running parallel. Uh, and it's huge. You know, I'll talk about oversized 212 because here's what it really was. It used to be a 4x12 cabinet. And someone decided, man, 412s are out, so I'm cutting it, <laughs> cutting it in half. And he made a 2x12 cabinet. It really sounds pretty darn good. You know, and so I wanted to see the difference. You know, uh, and see, you know, because it's such a huge cabinet. Um, you know, tw twice the size of the little fender, you know. And so I thought it would blow it away, you know, because it's so massive, it's so huge. And then another cabinet we'll, we'll listen to is, um, it used to be a Vox Valvetronics amp. And when I got it, uh, basically, I mean, you know, the, the electronic section, the amp part, you know, it was all messed up and it didn't work and all that kind of stuff, and, you know, pretty hopeless to repair. So basically I removed that and I bought a, um, a, um, it's called a plug and play and it's a jack panel and it can do 4 ohm, 8 ohm, 16 ohm. Right. Um, and it can do the two 8 ohms in stereo or two 4 ohm. Basically, it can do all kinds of different ohm settings, right? Because it's plug and play. And I made a back panel for it. Um, so I wanted to hear that as well. You know, let's see how that would come out. You know. Um, and the speakers are just those uh, Vox 12-inch um, speakers that they have in uh, Valtronic amps, right? Um, you know, so we'll check that out, too. Um, and so let's go take a listen to those and see see what the story is. Now, uh, yeah, right now I have so many different amps and things because I'm always trying out different things and seeing what sounds best and, you know, what works, what doesn't, so on and so on. Uh, so let's go take a listen. Okay, so I'm out here in my living room and I've got a loop going. Um, just a quick loop I made to kind of test this stuff out, okay? And the first thing we're going to check out is the Mini Orange. 8-inch speaker, 20-watt solid state. All right, let's take a listen. <laughs> okay, so there it is. That's a little... Very nice. 
Okay, now next we're gonna try the Fender X2 head and we're gonna try it with the Fender SC112 1x12 cabinet with a Celestian speaker. It's a stock speaker that it comes with. And remember this is $199 new. And lucky for us we've got my cat sitting on the amp head. Okay, so there's the Fender X2. Much louder, but super clear. Quite impressive. studio room and so that was just a test I was running just to see the differences and so on and here are my thoughts okay um, while the little orange mini orange okay and I should mention uh, for clarity that the entire time with all three on the other side I had a little other mini orange just because it's stereo ambience you know now the little mini orange you know the 20 LDX while it's 20 watts it's solid state watts and with an 8 inch speaker you know it wasn't as loud Okay, granted, that's to be expected. I mean, it's a small amp. It still gives you a big sound, but nothing like, you know, the X2 head with cabinets and so on. You know, and the X2 head, you know, that's 15 watts, but it's 15 tube watts. 
And that makes a huge difference in the volume of sound. However, I would say the sound quality of the Mini Orange is astounding. Astoundingly good. I mean, it's just so crystal clear and quiet. You know, I mean, especially for a living room, you know, it's perfect for that. All right, now moving on. The X2. Uh, my thoughts are this. Um, I, I love the X2 head, by the way. I think it's a great sound. Um, and when it's plugged into the SC112, right? The little black cabinet, you know, made for it, basically. Um, man, I can't believe it. The sound is really astounding. And, and compared to the 212, you know, especially the Behringer, which is real bassy, you know, um, you would think that, oh, well, the 212 would just blow it away, but no. That would be incorrect. That is not the case. And in fact, um, what the little Fender SC112 cabinet, um, what it lacks perhaps in low end compared to a 212, it makes up for it by being real punchy. You know, a well balanced sound. I mean, there's still a lot of low end, you know, um, but it's real punchy. And, and by the way, it's a lot louder. So it's a real, you know, input sensitivity is really good on that cabinet. Mm. And the, the punchiness of it makes for an astoundingly good sound. And in fact, it reminds me so much of the Fender Deluxe Reverb. You know, it's quite amazing. And I put it absolutely in that category. Certainly loud enough, you know, to play small gigs and that kind of thing, you know. Um, and that's just on the clean channel, you know. And from what I heard there, it can get a little louder than that, you know. I didn't want to go crazy, um, you know, turning it up and so on. But it gives you that great tube sound and so on. And, in fact, um, I like this little cabinet so much. I think it's a great bargain, you know, um, for the price. You know, I mean, the 199 new and so on. And I liked it so much, I ordered another one. You know, um, to have two in a pair. This is so convenient to have a pair of, you know, a 1 by 12 cabinets, you know, that you can carry around and so on. Okay, now the next one is the Vox. And the Vox are basically the... Vox speakers, you know, and I'm guessing it's Vox's version of a, probably a 70, 80 speaker or something, and um, immediately, you can tell, even from the Behringer or the little Fender 112, um, where, where'd the bass go, right, not much bass. Okay, um, still an appealing sound, though. I thought it, it really didn't sound bad, but just not a lot of bass, you know. Some people want a lot of bass, some people don't, you know. And they can always adjust the amp, I suppose. But you'll never get that big bassy sound from that Vox, you know. But it's not a bad sound, uh... I mean, I had to make a little panel for it, and unfortunately, uh, I think I'm going to have to reinforce it a little bit, because it's, you know, it's real thin. Uh, and, and that jack, don't forget, the Vox can, compared to the others, you know, uh, it can um, be a stereo or mono cabinet, but beyond that, you know, the fact that it can do 
16 ohm, 4 ohm, 8 ohm, right? It's pretty impressive to, to be able to do all of those depending on which jack you plug into because of that multiplay panel or jack panel, if you like. Um, and I mean, it's okay, but um, the second you plug into the the Fender or the Behringer, for that matter, right away you're like, oh, you know, that it can sound much bigger because you've got that bass response. Now, the Behringer is a real mystery to me, and I really like that cabinet. It's very strange. It is so gigantic. You know, it's huge because it's half of a 4x12. You know, but those speakers, you know, for, uh, you know, Behringer, Bouguera, or what have you, you know, you wouldn't think that they'd sound any good at all. But they actually, they sound pretty darn good. In fact, and this is what I really came to, the conclusion I came to. Perhaps the Behringer is... Um, a little bass here, a tiny bit, not by much, right, for being such a big 2x12 cabinet, you know, when compared to the Fender, though, what I discovered is, one, the Fender is louder, okay, and two, the difference in sound is not all that much, really. You know, I, I suppose it's different. You know, the Fender has a lot of low end as well, but I think the big difference is it's punchy. And maybe it's that closed back, but you know, the Behringer is closed back too. But it just doesn't have that punchiness is a good word to describe it. And that's the perfect sound, you know, matched with that X2 head. It's just unbelievable. You gotta remember, the Fender, you know, is only a 1 by 12 and half the size. Right? So, pretty impressive. Now, I ran some other tests earlier in the day. I couldn't really do it now. It's quite late. Um, and what I discovered is, at louder volumes, okay, and this is where the big changes come. I didn't even attempt it on the orange because it's, you know, it's a tiny little amp. Um, but on the X2, um, on the Fender cabinet, even at loud volumes, it stayed together. You know, didn't break up, and, and break up in a bad way. I mean, like flub out. You know, because you're running too much bass into it or that kind of thing. Um, so it kept it together, and especially on the higher strings, you know. And I've noticed sometimes on, on cheaper speakers, you know, at louder volumes, they just can't handle the higher strings. And this is exactly what I uh, found on the Behringer. You know, it could get as loud as the Fender, but the, when it did, you, then those speakers, you know, um, definitely uh, on the higher string, it started sounding brittle. It's the best word to describe it. And I didn't find that on the Fender. Hmm. And the Vox, the same thing. You know, higher volume, it just becomes brittle. Um, you know, now of course. I don't know, I mean, I don't play it volumes like I, you know, when I was testing, it was really loud, and I mean, uh, you know, the sound wasn't very good at all, you know. The maxing out your amps is not always going to give you the best tone, you know. I guess it depends what amp you have and what, what tone you're going for, but as far as just for clean tones. So those are the tests that I ran, just, you know, trying it out and seeing. 
and overall overall not taking the, the mini orange in comparison because the mini orange I think is a different class of amp as far as um, you know because of its size and things you know it's a great 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 sound I mean I love the sound of that very tube like however you know it's a small amp so it's not going to be quite the same as this uh, the head and cabinets uh, I will say the X2 head is unbelievable, really. For 15 watts, it can be very, very loud, but very clear. And it is the X2 sound that I get out of my combo amp. But I tell you what, when I plug into a X2 head with a cabinet, even the 112, um, I mean, it just blows away the little tennis speaker in the combo amp. And we're talking, you know, the cannabis racks and and the Weber speaker is still, you know, and, and it reminds me very much of when you take an X2 and play that, and then you plug in into the Deluxe Reverb, for example, right? And I mean, the Deluxe Reverb is on two, I think that's what I had it on, and it, it I mean, it just blew away the little X2 combo you know, surprisingly. So I guess the Deluxe Reverb can get very, very loud. Uh, and the best compromise is that head and cabinet comes so close to the Deluxe Reverb, I was really shocked. You know. So overall, um, one, I think that the Fender SC-112 cabinet, you know, is fantastic. And usually, you know, Fender, they put in these cheapo, cruddy speakers that you have to replace right away. You know, like the X2 combos and the stock speaker. It wasn't bad, but it would flub out and stuff. You know, um, this isn't the case here. You know, I mean, it's, it's a really, really good speaker. Um, you know, I mean, I suppose, you, you know, you, you could replace the speaker, you know, with something better, you know, but do you really need to? No. No. I mean, the sound is really fantastic. Um, just a real punchy, and, and that's the thing that I was really surprised about, is the punchiness of the, of the cabinet, really, um, and, and that's why, to me, the 112, which I was stunned, could actually compete with a 2x12. You know? I mean, I was just stunned by the, you know, how it could keep up, even. You know, you would never guess that. And you would never guess that from one of the most inexpensive 1x12 there is, really. You know, on those... Um, you know, online retailers. I mean, I was going through sorting them by price, you know. Um, and that was one of the least expensive, you know. Now, granted, you know, I haven't tried the, I think PV has one that's 199 as well. And I'm sure that that orange one, you know, if it's anything like their amplifier, is fantastic as well, you know. But twice the price. I mean, we're talking three seventy nine, not one ninety nine, right? And then from beyond that, you know, it goes up four or five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, you know. And wow, that's a lot of money for a one by twelve, you know. Um, and, and I'm not sure that'd be all that better, really. You know. Now, I've heard that the orange, though, has a lot of low end. I'm sure that's probably true, you know. But that's why I found that was so great about this little fender, is that, um, it makes up for it, you know, for lack of low end, which isn't really true at all. It does have a lot of low end. Um, and it doesn't flub out, you know. I mean, it keeps it together, which is really amazing. 
And it should because, you know, it's rated at 80 watts and you're running 15 watt tubes into it. It should be okay in this case, you know, because of the X2. Um, just a really nice, nice, nice sound. And, and the best I can, way I can describe it is it's a, you essentially have a deluxe reverb there, really. I mean, it's quite astonishing, really, when you consider the price of a deluxe reverb, you know. And truth be known, I mean, I prefer the reverb on the X2, even though it's a digital reverb, compared to the tube-driven reverb on the deluxe reverb. I don't know. For some reason, I just I'm not a big fan of the spring reverbs, you know. And you know what I'm talking about? The kind you know when you move the amp and it sounds like a thunderstorm, right? <laughs> there, when you, when you move a you know spring reverb tank, uh, I much prefer the digital reverb for some reason. You know, I just like the sound of it. Um, and the possibility of getting different kinds of reverbs, usually. Mm. So, I think it's an incredible value, and the sound quality is really great on the little Fender SC-112. And I, I'm not sure that I would really benefit all that much from a 212, you know? Now, I should preface that by saying, you know, my friend in Indianapolis has an EVH 212, and he swears by that cabinet. He just loves that cabinet. And, you know, I'm sure it's really great. Um, and, I, and I hope to one day compare the two, you know, the little Fender 1x12 to the EVH 2x12. You know, um, because it, you know, the two by twelves I had are aren't the greatest for sure, and the e but the EVH cabinet I mean, we're talking that's in the seven hundred dollar range, right? That's a lot of money. Um, probably very similar to like the orange two twelve, which is in that price range as well. You know, so. Um, and another thing to keep in mind is the, the weight of the orange cabinets. They're, they're heavy. I mean, that's all there is to it. Like they're 4x12. Oh my. You know, even compared to a, to a little Marshall 4x12, you know, um, the, the weight is just astoundingly different. You know. And these little fenders are not very heavy at all, really, you know, but, I mean, they're not as light as the orange, the mini orange, you know, of course, you know, uh, but it's so compact and convenient, you know, and the best part of all, of course, is, you know, just to change the sound if you wanted to. You know, you can get multiple one by twelves. You know, depending on what sound you want or what you like and that kind of thing. So you could always get a mini orange, or I'm sorry, an orange one by twelve if you wanted to. You know, or whatever. You know, they had a Black Star, EVH, a ton of different ones. You know. Uh, But for the price, you know, I, I just can't imagine that someone would not be happy with a little Fender, the, the SC-112. You know, pretty, pretty amazing, I think. Just the sound is real punchy and things. It really sounds great, especially with the X2. You know, and it was it was pretty much made for that amp, amp head. Sorry. And keep in mind, too, you know, obviously you can take a combo 
X2 combo and just un unhook the internal speaker and use the cabinet with it as well. And you get the benefit of the 12 inch speaker. And it's really good. It's, it really gives you a Celestian Fender sound, you know. Real punchy and, you know, kind of chimey a little bit, depending on your guitar and so on. Mm. And I was quite blown away. I thought there'd be a bigger difference, you know, honestly, between when I started using the 212 compared to the 112. You know, and there wasn't. You know, the difference is very small. Um, in fact, so if I had to go play somewhere, right, and I had a choice, well, do I take the Fender or the or the Behringer? You know, which is twice the size. You know, twice as heavy too. It's not bad though. I have to admit. But so bulky, you know. Or the little Fender 112. I wouldn't hesitate to take the little Fender 112, especially if you're playing through two of them. Plenty, plenty loud. You know, and a very, very nice sound. Um, the 212, you know, I mean, that's a lot bulkier. And if you're playing in stereo or something, and you have to take two of those, right? You can imagine. You know, then the, you know a lot of times the weight will come into into play, you know, into consideration anyway. Um, now my guess is is that more expensive two by twelve, you know, would probably sound better a little bit. You know, definitely more low end. This is bigger, you know, because it's pushing more air and things. But I think the Fender, man, not bad at all. And, and I know someone um, who has heard the Behringer and thinks it's, a, it's not a bad cabinet at all, you know, surprisingly. You know, so I think you'd have to spend quite a bit, really. Um, to outdo the little Fender 1x12, which is very unusual, because usually, you know, people swear by the 2x12, and, oh, I, you know, I can't play through a 1x12, it's too small sounding, or what have you, and I didn't find that to be the case here at all, you know, not at all. Uh, so there you go, and I mean, a lot of it has to do with the speaker, inside, of course, you know, and the, um, I guess the cost, you know, you would assume that those super expensive 2x12s, like a, you know, Mesa Boogie or whatever, right, <laughs> with like a thousand dollars for 2x12 or even more, uh, But my guess is that probably the difference wouldn't be all that huge, you know. But to be quite frank, I tried a, a really expensive Mesa Boogie at a store. I didn't really care for it all that much. It was so, so bassy. It's like playing through a bass amp, you know. And now, of course, this was in a store. It wasn't turned up and it didn't have you know, the settings on the amp tuned, you know, and so on and so on. I'm just saying, you know. And yeah, it was weird, because it really, it sounded like it was a freaking bass amp. <coughs> <coughs> so anyway, basically I'm very, very pleased with those little Fender uh, 1x12 cameras they're just so convenient you know and you know if you're playing a huge venue or whatever you know and some people are you know um <coughs> if you're playing a festival or so 
you know, you've got the small little Fender 1x12, you could just mic it to the PA, and that's what most people are doing, you know, there's no need for a 4x12. However, I love the sound of a 4x12. I just don't like carrying them around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, man, there was an Avatar, I think it was. It was a 4x12. <coughs> and I absolutely love the sound of it. Man. Just awesome. But, I passed on it. Um, it even came with a road case, and it was a pretty good deal. I mean, it was like $300 or something. Which, for what it was, was a really good deal. I'm sure I had great speakers in it. And it just sounded fantastic. However, <coughs> you know, you don't want to carry that around. And it was heavy. You know, I mean, even just getting it home. You know, I suppose, you know, in your studio room, you could have it there. You know, and... I guess it depends on the venues you play, you know. <coughs> if at all. I mean, you might play just in your studio room. You know. Um, and I, I mean, I understand that the 212 is a good balance on there, you know. Um, so I guess it just depends. But I, I don't see many 2x12 cabinets for 199 that have that kind of sound quality as the little Fender. And I was really blown away by that. Who would have ever guessed? I mean, I would have thought... And, you know, it sat in my studio room, like I said, and I kind of overlooked it. Just, nah, you know. <coughs> Thinking it wouldn't be that different. But it's a huge difference, especially over 10-inch speakers. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't hesitate to take that to a, to a gig, without a doubt, because it's, um, you know, it comes very close to a, a 2 by 12 really, which I would have never guessed either, you know. And I like the little Fender, you know. I like the price, I like the size of it, and I love the sound of it, you know. Especially where just stock speaker, you know, I don't see any point in, in replacing it, you know. That, the, really, the only speaker I've ever replaced um, in an amp, you know, is the, the Fender X2 Combo. Because there, you know, when you have a speaker that flubs out, you know, then that doesn't work very well. You know, with the low end, you play a note and all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, that's not what you want to hear. You want to hear real clear. And, and that's the other thing with the Fender. I've never heard it flub out or whatever. I mean, if you're really turning it up that much that it's flubbing out or distorting the speaker, you know, that's awfully loud, <laughs> I would think, you know, all right, so now I can finally put away those amps so that they're not taking over my living room on there, um, and, you know, uh, if you're interested, you can pick up a, one of those Fender cabinets at any of the online retailers, you know. Um, yeah. And, and I noticed, too, that they, they keep their price pretty well because used-wise, um, the closest one I saw was like 145 But by the time you pay the tax and shipping, I mean, you're basically paying the new price. You know, a lot of these online retailers, if you're having it shipped, you have free shipping. You still have to pay tax and so on. So it really comes out to about 220 you know, after taxes. Um, and I think worth every penny, you know. Very nice. You know. On there. 
Now, you know, if you want it to sound like a bass amp, you know, then definitely, you know, a real expensive uh, 2 by 12 <laughs> would probably be more what you're looking for, you know, but for the Fender-ish kind of clean sound. And as I said, with the X2 head, man, I bet you in a blind fold test, you'd have a hard time really telling the difference between the deluxe reverb and the X2 head and cabinet, really. In fact, to be quite honest, the X2 head and cabinet has a little punchiness. You know, maybe it's because it's a closed back cabinet. It has a little punchiness that the deluxe reverb doesn't have. You know, and I'm not knocking the deluxe reverb, it's a great amp. I'm just saying, sound wise. Pretty impressive. All right, anyway. Uh, so that's one thing I've been up to, you know, guitar-wise, so I thought I'd share it with you. And, and definitely, you know, test things out and, you know, try as many amps as you can to then settle on amps that you really like or like the sound of, you know. I mean, and not every, you know, not every amp is right for every player or for every situation, obviously. Okay. All right. See you next time. Bye.